One of the joys of volunteering at Four Lakes Wildlife Center is taking care of the baby songbirds every spring. They arrive as fragile orphans who depend on our care to grow strong and healthy. Our goal is to help them become self-sufficient so that they can be released into the wild. To accomplish this, we use specific techniques to help these young birds reach maturity. By watching this video, you'll learn the necessary skills to provide proper care to baby songbirds, which we also call nestlings. During a volunteer shift, you might also hear them referred to as incubator birds to differentiate them from the fledgling birds that we care for in the wildlife room. Nestlings require special care because of their age and size. They're mostly featherless and they're unable to thermoregulate, which means they're not able to maintain a normal body temperature outside of the warm incubators. The baby must be protected in a warm environment until he can grow a full set of feathers. When we admit a baby songbird, we place the bird in an incubator set to 95 degrees. This temperature ensures that the little one will stay warm and dry, improving his chance for survival. You may briefly remove the birds from the incubator to feed or to clean them. Just be aware that drafts or excessive temperature swings can be harmful to the bird's health. At the beginning of your shift, check the incubator water compartment located at the top of the machine. The water in this compartment helps maintain the right level of humidity in the incubator. The compartment should always be clean and full of water. If it's low on water, remove the drawer, wash it with clean, soapy water, then rinse and fill with water from the kitchen sink. Almost all the babies are fed a passerine diet every 30 minutes. The babies that don't get passerine are morning doves and rock pigeons, which are fed a special diet referred to as false crop. You will prepare fresh passerine at the start of your shift and put it into individual baby food jars for each bird or nest of birds. Each nest of birds should have a baby food jar of passerine and a baby food jar of water. These jars should be labeled with the same letter as the bird's nesting tub. This letter is also on the bird's care sheet. Make sure that every food and water jar has its own syringe to prevent cross-contamination when feeding multiple nests of birds. Smaller songbirds, such as finches, are fed passerine by using a 1cc syringe with a catheter tip. You can use a clear rubber tip to cover the catheter while feeding to minimize dripping passerine onto the bird's feathers. Larger birds, such as robins, have a wider gape, which makes them easier to syringe feed without the catheter. After drawing passerine into the syringe, wipe excess food off of the catheter tip or syringe to help keep the birds clean. Each small bird should be fed approximately 0.2 to 0.5 cc per feeding. Robins and other large birds may be fed 1 to 2 cc. A good way to gauge whether a bird has been fed enough or too much is to check its crop, a storage pouch of the esophagus located on the right side of a bird's neck. The crop is easily seen when it is full of food, but it should never be bulging and taut. If food is stuck in the baby's crop for a long time, the little one can develop a sour crop, which, left untreated, will result in septicemia and ultimately death. That's why it's important to hydrate the birds by feeding a drop or two of water after the passerine. It is very important to avoid a bird's glottis when feeding or hydrating. The glottis is a hole at the base of the tongue that is the opening to the trachea. When food or water accidentally passes into the glottis, the result is aspiration. When a bird aspirates food or water into their lungs, a deadly pneumonia can develop. Make sure that the syringe is inserted past the glottis and placed to either side of the mouth. One of the most important ways we can avoid aspiration is to put only a very small amount of food or water into the bird's mouth at one time. Dole out the feeding in very small increments one drop at a time, allowing the bird to swallow each bite before adding more. 
Most baby birds are fed a diet high in insects by their parents. In order to achieve a more natural diet, baby birds in the incubators will also get small pieces of insects several times a day to supplement the passerine formula diet. The feeding sheet will have an eye following the time during the feedings a bird should be fed insects. For these meals, the bird should be fed only insects rather than the passerine formula. To prepare insects for feeding the babies in all nests, put a small amount of vitamin water in the bottom of a baby food jar and drop enough insects into the water to feed all babies in the incubator. A good estimate is about two insects per baby. You can choose any of the types we normally feed the birds. That includes mealworms, earthworms, waxworms, or small crickets. Try to vary the insects from what was fed at previous feedings that day. Use only one pair of tweezers to pull insects from the communal insect jar. Do not use these tweezers to feed any birds. Insects should be pulled out of the water onto a lid and cut into small bits if needed. Each nest of birds should have their own pair of tweezers for feeding the insects to the birds. Indicate which type of insect was fed in the notes section of the feeding timeline. After each baby is fed, make sure you record it on the orange nestling feeding log which is located in a binder next to the incubator. Every page in the binder is identified with a letter of the alphabet which corresponds to the letter on each bird's nesting tub. The top of every nestling feeding log should be filled out with the bird's admit number, leg band color, date, and species if known, and the nesting tub letter. Write the approximate amount that was fed to each bird in the space next to the feeding time on the log and put a check next to that time. There are codes that you can use to indicate if a bird did not eat. You can write R for refused, or FF if you had to force feed the baby. You can mark these codes on the feeding log where you normally would record the amount of passerine fed to the bird. A baby should not miss more than one feeding if their crop is empty. If you find a little one that refuses to eat for two feedings in a row, alert an advanced volunteer so they can give it fluids. If a bird still is not gaping after 30 minutes, it will need to be force-fed. Do not force-feed a baby bird until you've been shown how by Four Lakes Wildlife Center staff. <coughs> Nestlings will regularly get fecal matter and passerine on their feathers, so you must clean them promptly after every feeding. Dip a Q-tip or a cotton ball into a small ceramic dish of warm water and gently wipe any food off the bird's feathers and beak. If food from previous feedings has dried on their feathers, you will need to swab the bird until the passerine loosens and you're able to carefully remove the remains. This process should take no more than a few minutes, so if the bird is extremely dirty, cleaning them up may take more than one session. Do not get the bird excessively wet, as hypothermia can be a problem for a wet baby bird, even if it's in a warm incubator. This cleaning process may require some patience and some time, but it's important to delicately handle the bird. Never pull dried passerine off any part of the bird's body, because you will also pull out new feathers that the birds need for thermal regulation. It is better to feed the birds prior to cleaning their nest, because most baby birds will poop after each feeding. If a baby doesn't poop after a couple of feedings, you can hold a warm, wet cotton ball under their belly for a few moments to help them relax. You should alert staff if a bird still doesn't poop. A bird that is bloated and unable to produce fecal droppings may be suffering from dehydration. If a nestling is dehydrated, it will need extra feedings of water or sub-Q fluids administered by an advanced volunteer. You can spot a dehydrated bird by examining their abdomen and their throat. A healthy bird has a smooth, round abdomen, while a dehydrated bird's abdominal area appears to be wrinkly. In addition, a bird that's dehydrated will have very stringy saliva. If you observe anything out of the ordinary in the bird's appearance or physical functioning, 
don't hesitate to alert the shift leader or an advanced volunteer. There are a number of specific trouble signs that you need to watch for. If a bird refuses to eat for two feedings in a row, has abnormal posture, has legs splayed when in the nest, if it is panting or open mouth breathing, or has green feces, ask for help at once. Other indications that something may be wrong are when a baby doesn't gape to eat or show an interest in eating and when their head falls to the side. These are signs of lethargy in nestlings. Healthy animals should look bright and alert. Anytime a nestling demonstrates troubling behavior, it should be recorded at the bottom of the bird's feeding log in the special notes section. By following the feeding techniques that we have presented and by observing and reporting unusual behaviors, you can help increase a nestling's chance of survival. Thank <sharp inhale> you.